decision is made. Hey, Recruiter Guy here, coming to you live from my home office or the back of the house. Uh, just today's video blog will be part one in a series talking a little bit about cloud recruiting uh, tools and measuring return. Uh, and an article that I posted last week is actually what kicked this off. I explained how Google Reader uh, could be used to create uh, sourcing agents on a cloud. Uh, the thought behind that being that no matter how on the go a recruiter might be, uh, they'd have their Boolean or search string agents available to them and sorted neatly online, waiting for them, like little friends. They're always there for them and won't let them down and they'll never leave. Okay, well, you get the idea. What resulted was a barrage, nine, nine, not a barrage, but nine emails and a handful of instant messengers and comments asking for more information about being productive, recruiters using newsreaders, RSS aggregators, and email. Now, most of the emails consisted of questions around RSS, which is really simple syndication, and it's emergence into recruiting. I won't dive into a long explanation about it, but to kind of, because obviously a quick Google or wiki search uh, would get you where you could connect all the dots, but just so that we're all on the same page, uh, in the interest of getting us uh, moving along, really simple syndication and atom feeds give us an easy way to monitor various sources of blogs news and similar content by providing it all in a big like an easy to digest nugget while giving us the freedom at least in most readers to sort and archive said content however we would like with the explosion of growth on the internet it's easy for any recruiter to suffer from information overload especially if they're doing their best to grasp quickly emerging technology and the literal flood of social applications online the sticking point for most is trying to decipher the puzzle that then presents itself. How much time to spend with which application and how to measure the results. So let's keep it basic for starters. We need to understand what we're trying to accomplish. Without the what, it's almost futile to push forward and worry about the how, right? If your what is that you're trying to attract more Gen Y females to job X in location Y, then you've got specifics that you can start to cook with. Then you can start thinking about the how, and that's where the tools and the time come into play. Wayne Gretzky, yes, the hockey great, said once that good hockey players don't skate to where the puck is. They skate to where the puck will be. There's great wisdom here in regards to breaking away from that old post and pray mentality that so many recruiters still suffer from. Oh, I'm going to post a job online, and because my company has a great reputation, the candidates will come running. Oh, I'm going to put my job out on Monster, or Career Builder, or this board, or that board, and I'll get enough people to sift through and fill that job. Not so much anymore. Career boards, all the job boards are losing market share, and the internet becomes much more of a player in terms of search engines and optimization and marketing than it ever was before. Do your homework. When looking at how, when looking to identify the how, it's important to ask yourself where your moving target is going, where the puck will land. Grab some demographics. A recent study reported that Facebook users were roughly 63% female and 36% male, with the majority of its members being in the 18 to 25 year old bracket. With over 2.7 million members, these are significant numbers. Now, of course, my favorite network being, and be warned, I'm kind of fickle, is Twitter. And while another recent study shows that 64% of the users on Twitter are male, it also reports that Gen Y, while slipping, still dominates this community. A few great places to look for basic demographics, Compete.com, Alexa.com, are two of my favorites for traffic measurement and statistics. Of course, you can use any number of services. You can even go straight to the source. For instance, uh, by sending a direct request to a site like diversityinc.com, I got a response that told me that over 90% of the site members have at least a bachelor's degree and 63% are female, with 20% that work in IT. Outside of hard data, ask your own network. After all, you network with peers in your industry, so take advantage of this. In all my time recruiting, I have absolutely never had anybody tell me to take a hike because they recruit within the same industry. A network I enjoy using for just that purpose is LinkedIn. The feature you'd be looking for are the groups, and of course this is outside of sending a quick message or just your direct contacts but groups and then the answers section, which I think you can find on the bottom right uh, of the profiles now, right? It allows you to categorize your question and target the audience you'd like to receive a response from. Two other great networks for asking advice on targeted recruiting, uh, recruitingblogs.com and ere.net. Uh, two of my favorites that are full of absolutely terrific people in the recruiting industry and that are usually pretty happy to help. 
The list of how you do your homework is completely up to you. In suggesting these, I am by no means saying that this is the only place you should get your data, but they are really good starting points in my opinion. So, so let's fast forward. You've done your homework and you've decided on the what you're looking for and where you'd like your deliver, where you'd like to deliver your message, both being relative obviously to the audience that you're after. Now we talk about the how you get that message out and work to measure your return next time. So thanks for watching this quick video blog. Uh, the transcripts will be housed on recruiterguide.net along with all my other articles, videos, contact details, and rants. Uh, until my next entry, as the great one says, keep your eye on the puck. So